What's going on guys? John Alder here from codeme.com and in this video, we're gonna look at getting user input with Dart. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at getting user input, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership to all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna talk about getting user input with Dart. So allowing the user to type stuff in and then doing something with whatever they typed in. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Dart videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Dart starter code that we always have, and I'm calling this in.dart for input, I guess. And the first thing we need to do is import a library that will handle input output type stuff in Dart. And so we just come up here to the top and import, and it's just from Dart, we want to import IO. So that's all there is to that. Now we can use input output stuff in our program. So let's start out by just printing to the screen, enter your name. And now we want to allow the user to enter their name. So let's create a variable and there's a couple of ways we can do this. I'll talk about in a second. We'll just start with the normal way by saying var and then let's name it. We'll call it name because we're asking for their name. And now we set this equal to stdin standard input and then dot, we want to read line sync. And this is synchronous. You could also do asynchronous, but we're not going to deal with that in this video. We're just going to read line sync. So this will take whatever the user types onto the screen, assign it to this name variable, and now we can do stuff with it. So uh, you know, we could print hello, and then just print out that name. Let's go ahead and save this and run it, see what that looks like. So I'm in my C slash Dart stuff directory. Let's run Dart in dot Dart. And it says, enter your name. I could type in John. It says, hello, John. So a couple of important things. This is going to take in a string, right? It doesn't take in a variable. You can even try, you know, we could go like int, uh, number equals and then you know do this whole thing it's not going to allow you to do that for several different reasons one this just takes in strings two there's some interesting things around nullability here so you know this is one way to create a variable using var we can also define the thing right away so string name equals and then if we copied all this stuff if we try to run this in the normal way we're going to get an error so let's take a look at that so if we run this again oh we get an error because you'll see a, a value of type string question mark, which I'll talk about in a second, can't be assigned to a variable of type just regular string because string question mark is nullable and string isn't. So nullable means can be null. Like for instance, if the user doesn't type in anything and just hits enter, that's null. Well, a string can't be null, but a string with a question mark at the end of it can, right? So in this case, if you wanted to do it like this, we'd have to come back here and just very simply change this to string question mark. So if we did that and run it, it's gonna work just fine. Hello, John, right? So likewise, integer can't be null, right? You can't have a null number. So that's one of the reasons why you can't take an integer uh, to use this method. But what you can do is take this, input it as a string, and then convert that string to an integer. And we'll probably talk about that in the next video when we talk about changing data types, but for now, this will work just fine. Just realize this is for strings and for right now, strings only, but pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And really that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.